So, <laughs> back to the tutorial. Um, I created this coin here so that when you touched it, it would destroy all of the enemies just like that using trigger on triggers that will only be triggered by um, the player, not the bullet or not the enemy. And I showed you guys how that is done. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. And then at the end of that video, I mentioned how I'm going to have these enemies randomly spawn in to this scene instead of me putting them in there. So a nice random enemy um, generator. And then I'll probably do the same for this um, coin. So um, just real quick, I'll drag the coin down here to create a nice little um, prefab of it. Um, here is fine. Put it in here. Nice little prefab of the coin and has everything else on it. So then I'll just go ahead and also delete the coin. All right, so in my scene, I've created this empty game object I'll just put it at zero, zero, zero. Empty game object, and I've called it enemy spawner, right? And then I have created an enemy spawn script. And I'll put this enemy spawn script on him, and then we'll go into that enemy spawn script. You can see it's blank. I haven't put anything in there. So we're going to do that part together. Together together all right so let's get started first of all I have um, I don't know if you saw if I go to enemies I have two types of enemy I don't know why I still have this I can actually get rid of that Oops, gone. but I have two types of enemies one that explode and one that shoots and so I'm gonna have that randomly spawn so um, first thing that would come to your mind is probably to create a public game object and you know you have enemy one and then enemy two well while this will work um, it's just simpler to create a array instead and I'll just call these enemies to spawn and then all you have to do here yeah <coughs> all you have to do here is put a open and close brackets and then you have an array. So if you save this and head back to Unity, and keep in mind this tutorial is for people that is not a professional. So I'm sorry if I'm going too slow <laughs> for some of you guys, but I am trying to make sure everyone is understanding what's going on. So back to the enemy spawner. You said the enemies to spawn um, is a little array thing that pops up here. You can you can put your size. So if you have like ten enemies, boom, you can do that. In my case, I only have two. So when I do that now, I can just drag them in there and set it up like that. So now, if I want to talk about like the which one is the first, the exploding enemies first, shooter enemies second. So if I want to spawn exploding enemies, all I got to do is type um, enemies to spawn, boom, boom, and that gives me reference to that game object, right? So with that in there, let me now create. I don't, I don't even need this. But let me now create uh, something to generate a random position, okay? So I'm sure you guys have done a lot of um, function create creating. You've created a lot of methods and functions. Um, and you've used a lot of void, void, void. Well, in this case, we're not going to use a void. So anytime you're not using a void, it's because you want it to be a return function or return method. So this one I'm going to call it get random position or post. I'm going to call it get random post and boom like that. So you see it comes back red because it, it requires you to actually say return what is that I'm spelling? Return and return something. You see it's already not. It's no longer red and I didn't even put anything in. But it requires a return because Every time we call this, we're not just calling the function, but this function name will represent a 3D point in space. 
and then that's what a vector three is x y and z right so let's start creating some random stuff first of all i know that when i spawn the enemy on the board i'm not going to be affecting the y at all but um how big is the board if i put an enemy on there right uh if i go if i go like negative four you can see right here on this number like negative uh what is it, negative 40 let's just call it negative 40 and then is it a perfect square would this be like a positive 40 yeah we can run with a positive 40. negative 40 positive 40 um on the x and then let's look at the z so forward and backwards all the way back there how far are you uh, about here it's fine let's call that 45 um, on the uh, negative scale and what if I put you at a positive 45 sir where do you go okay so we do 40 40 45 40 for X 45 for um, Z right so with that knowledge now we can say okay let's create some floats because again we know that these are numbers these are floats so we're gonna set some um, some random numbers to be generated from these points, minimum and maximum. So X, let's do X first. I'll call it underscore X and I'll say equal, right? A random dot range of numbers from the lowest, so negative 40 comma positive 40. That's my random range, right? I'm gonna do this now for a Z so underscore Z is gonna be a negative 45 to the positive 45 and then as for height I did not check um, we're good here at like a was a 0 0.5 yeah I think 0 0.5 is, is is actually boom right on the dot so again, I'll delete this enemy, come back to my script, and my Z will be a 0 0.5, so I can create uh, my float. Not my Z, not my Z, my Y. I can create my, my float here, and I'll do underscore Y and say equals 0 0.5 F, and I am done with that. Next, I'll now create my new position, right? So I'll say a vector three, new post for new position equal and then I'm creating a new um, uh, new point in space new point in space so say new vector 3 and this is where you give it your X Y and Z and it creates a new point in space and assign it to my variable new post right so new point in space will actually be my underscore X comma um, underscore uh, y comma underscore uh, z simple right and then I'm returning why can't I spell return directly my new position and that gives me a new a random position on my board every time I call this right every time I call it gives me a random position on my board so I'll just create a void and I'll call this spawn on now okay so this will handle actually spawning in the player and I'll show you you guys know how to spawn stuff and you type instantiate and you know what instantiate needs it needs the original object that you're gonna spawn first okay so if I want to hard code this hard code this to spawn the bombers I will type boom give it zero comma then needs a position, it needs a rotation, right? So you guys know how to do instantiate, I would assume. So what I would do next is call this for the position. Boom. That's it. Because this represents that number. Guys, it represents it's a vec this is a vector three. And if you type transform that position here, transform that position is a vector three. As soon as you type position, that's a vector three. So now um, rotation I will usually just go with quaternium dot um, 
identity. And I'm done. So this will now randomly spawn at any position on my board, my bombers only, with because I specified zero. But if you look closely here, you already have the answer on how to pick a random enemy. It's really, really simple. Remove your zero and instead use your same um, random.range command. So put drop that in there. And of course, the range of this is not those numbers, but it's from zero to um, two, I believe. I believe zero to two is what you want to say because um, zero can, can occur, one can occur, but two doesn't occur when it does random range. It's, it's kind of weird, but I don't believe it does the max of the number. I believe it does. I, I could be wrong, so we'll test it, but um, if anything, I'll get an error message saying that something is out of bounds when it tries to but yeah so in here now we're picking a random enemy from our array and put him at a random spawn so now to actually call this function uh that's all we got to do to finish the script is just call this function and we are done right so really one liner here um a couple of simple logics there and then it's going to be just a one liner right here to call the function and have have stuff happening um, what you want to use is just use the invoke repeating the way invoke repeating works is you can see here in the intelligence needs the method name as a string so you put quotes and give it the method name which is spawn now that's the first thing it needs really simple and then it needs a time so this is the invoke the method you know method name in time second so call this method for the first time when you're going to call it how long you're waiting before you call it so we can start spawning the enemies after five seconds boom and then also in seconds tell it how many times after you're going to be calling it so um the the repeat rate not the maximum total times you're going to spawn but like I'm gonna spawn the enemies in five seconds. And then after every, what, three seconds, they're gonna spawn and spawn and spawn. There is no stop in it here. So this invoke repeat, it doesn't stop until you tell it to stop somehow with some other code. Um, but what you could do is set up parameters here to say, well, if you have a total amount of enemies, um, then you don't spawn anymore. The method, this will still try to call it, but if you're not spawning, you're not spawning. It doesn't harm you to just call it, right? So I'm gonna spawn enemies in every, every four seconds, actually. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna first, I'm gonna start spawning them in eight seconds and then spawn them after every five seconds. Yeah. First enemy will spawn in eight seconds and then every other five seconds. That's what that, this is how this works. So that is set, we're good to go without spawning random enemies. This is the code, look at it one more time. And that's it. Save, head back to Unity, and we'll just, um, we should be able to test this. I think I've already connected things here. So yeah, my enemies are connected um, via the array. Just notice that my player is floating off the ground. I'm at 0 0.5. And uh, we're ready to, to roll here. Um, Play. And I'm going to head back to this scene here to kind of just watch what happens. So in about eight seconds, see what happens here. Boom. You see we got an enemy over here. And then after every five seconds, boom. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, there's a red up there, three, four, five, boom, and just, they just keep coming. So, um, another really cool thing you can do with the random dot range number is anywhere where you put a number, guys, you can put it there. Like, 
I don't want it to be predictable of how often they're spawning. So instead of every five seconds rate, I'm gonna change it to, you know, some can spawn in two seconds, anywhere from, from, uh, um, you know, from eight seconds, from, from two to eight seconds using the random mob range, right? So, and even though that's in the start function, it's an invoke repeat. So that call to spawn now is gonna happen over and over, and each time it happens, that random number that will generate it from two to eight will occur. Let's see one just spawn. Collapse some of these. Not a one just spawn. Oh, and then oh, that's, not, that's not bullet. Not a one just spawn. And he's shooting at me already. But that's it, guys. I hope I hope this helps somebody out there. But it's how you create some random um, enemy spawner here. It looks like we're getting a couple of reds this time. A lot of reds, and then some greens coming on. But the time between when they spawn is completely random. Not one just spawn up out there. And you can make a smaller constraint to make sh make sure that they spawn within uh, a distance of the enemy or out of the player. That's all that stuff you can do. You can do spawn, um, you know, within a certain distance of the player. So when you did your X, Y, and Z, and you did your random range. Um, in there, you can simply just generate a random number from the player's position. So you get the player's position plus or minus um, a certain number. So you say, okay, I want to spawn like anywhere from 10 to 15 on the left or the right of the player. And then on the Z, you can do the same thing as well. All right. Anyways, guys. Take it easy. Leave me a comment if there's something I missed that you wanted me to go over. And for sure, I'll go over it, man. You know I got you. Catch you in the next one.